When bodybuilders retire, what an amazing video I saw on this. This is my response. I'm going to present my scientific perspective on how I see what happens to amazing pro bodybuilders once they finally retire and how they look and how they live. So first off, I have the utmost respect for the top pro bodybuilders and anyone that's a bodybuilder that dedicates their life. It's an incredible lifestyle. Obviously, it's dangerous, like a lot of other sports are very dangerous. So I have incredible respect for these people. And first off, let it be known that these people are incredibly gifted. Number one, they have great genetics. You can give steroids to anyone in the world and they're never gonna have physiques like that. Great genes. Number two, they have discipline, amazing discipline for training, training through pain and personal sacrifice, of course, including dieting. And then of course, there are the drugs. And we know that the drugs work very well and they pay for that. It's amazing in awe, people, when we see how their bodies change and what they do. They provide that for us. They provide that service for us. It's the sacrifice they take. And I want to give my perspective scientifically of what they live with after. After years and years of this kind of lifestyle for everything it entails, and then they retire. Now we know some are forced into retirement and some die. Some have health issues and they retire, notably, and some will certainly be changed for life. That's for sure. This will be the science of what happens and what we see. Once they retire, we see they look different, they change. There's multiple changes. This is how they are. This is how they feel. And this is what happens. It's a multum system organ effect, if you will. And of course, unfortunately, it is disease. Number one, endothelial damage. After years of using steroids and other pads, including growth factors, IGF, and insulin, training so hard as they do, and all the calories they ingest, they are gonna have endothelial damage. That's the inner wrapping of the artery. It will manifest in two disease states, cardiovascular disease with coronary artery disease, it leads to heart attack, and heart failure, where the actual size of the heart enlarges and does not function well. In addition, they have renal disease and significant kidney disease. Some suffer with chronic kidney disease for life, Others will lead quickly into end-stage renal disease requiring dialysis and kidney transplantation. See the videos on that, please. Next, there is significant endocrine apathies and endocrine changes. All these men will suffer with anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism once they retire. Every single one. All these men will have to live on testosterone replacement for life, and if they decide to have children and maintain fertility, we have to use different fertility protocols. It's quite complex. Some of them actually will never regain fertility. There's a down regulation on the hypothalamus and pituitary that we don't understand at all. And that's why I'm studying these things. There's definitely effects on the adrenal physiology that we definitely do not understand. Next, neuromuscular. This is very interesting and esoteric. I compare this and what happens to the muscle tissue and they look different. You see that some of them look very, very small, and quite wasted and cachectic. Why is that? Well, we don't know, but I've seen a few cases and I've talked to some of the top neuromuscular neurologists in the world about this over the last 10 years. I've seen some cases that have been accelerated. Post anabolic steroid sarcopenia versus age-related sarcopenia. As someone gets older, you see they waste, the muscles waste anyway. 
it seems like steroids can cause some accelerated damage on the neuromuscular tissue. We don't understand it, and there's a lot of genetics on that. Some people get it, some men don't. In addition to the neuromuscular aspect in this part, there's chronic trauma and nerve damage. Look at Ronnie Coleman crying out loud. Ronnie's almost paralyzed. He's had some neck injuries and cervical spine, and he's had obviously his LS, his lower lumbar sacral spine. He's had multiple, I think 10 surgeries or, or more. So that, look at the chronic trauma, look at the nerve damage on that uh, standpoint. Obviously after that happens, you're not gonna have proper neural feedback to the muscles. And the last part I see it is psychiatric and depression. There's no question I see these men, they come to me. And you're not going to see this in the media, you just won't see it. They have depression. They've lived incredibly so high for so many years and now they have to live with the reality of not being big anymore, not feeling well, actually, unfortunately, suffering disease. And they don't feel good. Neurochemical depletion in the CNS, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine and GABA have definitely been affected and there are studies on this. In the end, that's my take on what happens to bodybuilders when they retire. Again, I have so much incredibly respect for these people for what they've done for us to really show us and to awe us and to inspire us for what they can do with the human body. The amazing levels of how you can take the body to that state. It's, it's such an inspiration to us. But again, I want everyone, certainly young men that are looking at this early, please be careful. If you lead into this life to some aspect, to a greater or lesser extent, some of these issues may happen to you. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.